When you look at the critical decisions that need to be made in 2008, to be able to move forward from this foundational level technology that's first out there, we have to make some absolutely critical decisions. Because we as manufacturers have to act on requirements. We can't get requirements until we know, we talked about this previously at these luncheons, we have to know the end result of the plan. And one, and the questions we have to resolve is, what is going to be the role of the aircraft? Specifically in the aircraft, what is the pilot's function going to be? And what is the avionics or the computer on board the aircraft? What functions do they have? And when you go to the ground infrastructure and you look at that, we have to know what the roles of the dispatcher are or the control center, what the role of the computer is on the ground, this large Cray integrating computer out there, and what the roles of the controllers are. And let me use a, an example to illustrate this. If we go and, and we take care of the, the Jake 1 arrival, or look at the Jake 1 arrival in Morristown, New Jersey, we have two fixes that are down here in, in the Maryland area that we go in and feed into this airport. Now, think about in the future. And you want to have aircraft arrive at a very close interval into Morristown Airport. And the controller in the control tower, it's snowing outside, like today up there, and he says, okay, I've got to establish this interval because the runway's slippery, and I've got to be able to have these airplanes land as expeditiously, expeditiously as possible, but I've got to account for the interval. Or you have an airline dispatcher at another airport that says, my gates are going to be full at this time, so I need aircraft to arrive on final and touch down at these specific times so I have gates free for them to pull directly into. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus for the love of flying. Now back to Aero TV. Well, if I want to arrive at those specific points in space and at time, is the computer on the ground going to take that dispatcher or that control tower information, send it to send it into this integrating computer? Is that computer going to transmit a computer to computer message up to the cockpit and the aircraft is going to fly a path? It may not be a straight line path, it may be slightly curved to arrive using its max range cruise speed at altitude to that specific point in space. If that happens, is the pilot going to acknowledge the instructions? Is the controller going to watch this, manage a whole bunch of airplanes out there getting these computer instructions, making sure the pilots acknowledge them, and then be able to do the audibles when we have convective weather pop up or an emergency happens? So we can go and shift controllers from one job to another. Is that what the con controller's role is going to be? When we get on final approach and we come down on those R&P approaches and we converge into the same tube, are we going to have what's called self-separation? Is the computer in one airplane going to talk to the computer in the other airplane and adjust its interval so that the speeds are compatible and we can optimize the spacing between those? Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have those answers yet. And just as Alan challenged the aviation press in the room, I challenge you, you need to be asking those questions. Because until we get those roles figured out, we as the manufacturers won't get requirements, so we can't give a precise timeline of how quickly we can get the fleet equipped. And it's important for everybody to realize that the cost of the new system is going to be borne primarily for those that are equipping the cost is going to go to the aircraft. It's not going to be so much as in the ground infrastructure. And that's why this, this emphasis that we've had on this user fee debate really, really clouded the picture when really the cost is up to the aircraft and all we want to do is get the plan and get the requirements. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. 
The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Why is there a need for urgency? Well, a couple things are very important out there. First of all, capacity. Alan mentioned Phil Boyer's term, now gen. I love it. Jim May from the, the Air Transport Association loves it. In fact, Jim, I think, is trying to steal it from Phil. But what does now gen mean? Well, we're very supportive of, of Phil's concept out there that there are specific things that we can do in this system today to build capacity. I'll talk about those in a second. And along with capacity, we have this giant gorilla bearing down us, and that's the environmental concerns. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And last but not least, no matter what happens in the election, we're going to have a change in administration. And we have a finite window to be able to drive our agenda to policymakers, and we're going to have to live with what happens as this new administration takes hold, so we've got to be able to shape that debate. You know, in this picture, when we look at capacity, a lot of times we see this picture up in the press, and, and folks don't realize, you know, in the last one, the dot was about the size of New York City. Each one of these airplanes is about the size of Rhode Island. But it's unmistakable that the hub-and-spoke system drives the capacity issue, and if we don't do something about this and help the airlines in this capacity s situation, it's going to impact us. Why? If folks have another summer, like they did last year, of missing their vacations, missing their business, business appointments because of canceled flights, it is going to spill over onto general aviation when people try to do a knee-jerk reaction to try to fix this problem. So it's in all of our best interests to come together and deal with the capacity issue. And as I said, I think the now gen recommendations, and you'll, you'll hear more and more about those in the next few weeks, are a great, great set of recommendations that, that AOPA has put forward to be able to go and try to capitalize on what we can do today to build more capacity in this system.